Fidel Castro, I was going to say famous, certainly iconic, probably infamous leader of Cuba since the 1950s when he led a revolution to overthrow the government and install communism and a very classically militaristic style communism supported by the Soviet Union. And he, unlike the Soviet Union, he managed to preserve it until quite recently. Cuba, close neighbor of America, America very paranoid about having a communist nation on their borders, just a few miles away from their coastline. And of course, mainly because as an ally of the Soviet Union, it's a way for the Soviets to get into America. Famously, there was the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962, in which the Soviets planted uh, ballistic, intercontinental ballistic missiles with potential nuclear warheads, which could be aimed at the Americas. Um, and there was a whole crisis, uh, lasted 13 days, and the Americans and the Soviets and the Cubans managed to reach an agreement that removed the missiles from Cuba, um, improving the security of the United States against the missile strike uh, in the Cold War. The best way, the Americans thought, or at least the CIA thought, to guarantee the security of the Americas was to get rid of Fidel Castro, to assassinate him. In 2006, uh, Fabian Escalante, who was the former chief of security for Fidel Castro, published a book. And in it, he claimed that they foiled at least 634 attempts by the CIA to assassinate Fidel Castro. And in fact, I think the number has gone up since then to um, 638. I don't know if you can see that. This is a really good documentary um, about it. Uh, I thoroughly recommend it. It's called 638 Ways to Kill Castro. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic documentary. <laughs> I love how um, bad they are at right? just killing someone. I know. It's remarkable, <laughs> it's right? terrible. Like, how can you be that bad? <laughs> also, and... after like 100 attempts, do you think they would have got their heads together? Or, oh, God, this is embarrassing. Like, We yeah. need to figure this out. Or do you think the attempts just got more and more desperate as they went along? So like the 638th attempt was just, they just sent Barry, just sent Barry from HR, go and kill Fidel Castro. We've run, we've, we're at the end of our tether here. So we thought we would discuss, we can't go through all of them when we could, but it might take a long time, but we would discuss our favorite assassination methods that were the CIA attempted against Fidel Castro over the many years he was in power in Cuba. And so Let's take it away. Martin, Yes. what's your favourite method? Well, my favourite <laughs> relates to a, a, a seashell. It sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? But anyway, Fidel Castro was very much uh, known for his love of, of diving, of scuba diving in particular. Right, yeah. And, um, and what do scuba divers do when they're underwater and they're looking around? They go, okay, well, I'm going to look for marine wildlife, colourful marine wildlife. I'm going to look for... Uh, maybe some Wellington boots that have been dropped in the ocean. You know, these are the useful things that are sometimes found in the sea. <laughs> and they also look for uh, colourful shells. Hmm. Mm. Okay. So uh, keep bear that in mind. Uh, the the CIA supposedly what what their plan was was to find a shell or plant a shell big enough to house some explosives inside the shell, and then paint it really colourful co colourful colours. Mm -hmm. um, in the hope that Fidel Castro, like a toddler, would go, oh my goodness, there's a, a, a bright blue, yellow and red shell that's painted by a five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he would go, oh, this, is, this looks amazing. And he would go, oh, you know, I've dived down, go to the, the seafloor, pick up the shell, boom, he's, uh, he's dead. That was the idea anyway. And then they, then they realised that there were, there were some, uh, some issues with, of course, finding a shell big enough to house explosives, especially back in the 60s. <laughs> uh, and also the fact that you know, he may well, it may well not even pick up the shell. Um, the fact that, of course, water, water moves things around on the ocean. <laughs> you might end up getting a fish that swims into the shell and blows it up. Um, so there were, there were a few drawbacks to this. So they decided not to go with this particular method. So it was scrapped, actually. But I just thought that was amazing that they would think that if they painted a shell colourful enough, that El Castro would, would, his eyes would light up, would come out to the bottom and, and would blow into bits. So that, that's probably my favourite. That's this amazing. Is, this has got to be lower down on the list at that point. This has got to be like <laughs> attempt number 600. <laughs> Paint, Paint some shell. clams. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically basically someone from the CIA came back from a from their kids' preschool. It yeah. was like, ah, oh, that sh painted shell. The kids love that, don't they? They're they're all over those painted shells these days. <laughs> you know what? Like, we could transfer that to Fidel Castro. He loves shells. You know who else loves shells? Fidel Castro. 
Let's uh, you know, shells. <laughs> <Yeah>. Notoriously <laughs> loves <laughs> shells. <laughs> He just pieces of his scuba diving. He love, all scuba divers love shells. Everyone knows that. Uh-huh. I mean, in fairness, if that had worked, then uh, that would have been crazy. That would have been insane. Yeah. Couldn't have looked if like he... an accident, though, could it? Like... No, it's no Steve Irwin. <laughs> yeah, if it had not... worked, I mean, the whole Cuban nation would have been shell shocked. Oh, hello. Ding, ding. I'm Very here all week. Here all week. Joke off the Very podcast. Good. Let's shut it down now. Let's just <laughs> yeah, drop the mic. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, nice. Yeah, also, also relevant. Yeah, Very good. we'll Very get good. there. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it makes sense, right? But the CIA clearly did a massive psychological and habitual behavioral profile of Fidel Castro to come up with some of these methods. Uh, because my method also involves his love of diving. But I, I, it's, it's, it's similarly weird, though. I mean, weird or inventive, I can't quite decide. And this was something that they didn't know about until 2016, um, when it was finally declassified, almost by accident, I think. Um, but it involved James Donovan, who's a US lawyer, who was played by Tom Hanks in the film Bridge of Spies. Did you see oh, that? I haven't no, seen that film. I, no. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't actually. No. R- really good, actually. G- good Spielberg movie. Good Cold War thriller. Um, I recommend it. I enjoyed it. Um, but what I didn't realize is that the same guy who was involved in uh, negotiating the release of hostages in East Germany uh, in, ni- in the 1960s also went to Cuba to negotiate with Fidel Castro to release hostages uh, left over from the, Cu- uh, the Bay of Pigs invasion from 1961, I want to say. Or was it 1960? 60, I think. Bay of Pigs. Yeah. Bay of Pigs. I think it was 1960, so at the very beginning of JFK's presidency, which was a notorious CIA-led operation to get a lot of Cuban exiles who had fled Cuba when Fidel Castro took over and gone to Florida and wanted to return to their own country. And the idea was the CIA would train them up in their thousands and then invade um uh, Cuba, but it went disastrously wrong. The Cubans knew it was happening, and they all got trapped on a beach, basically, and captured. And there are about thousand one hundred of them, and so the U.S. sent this lawyer, James Donovan, to Cuba to negotiate the release of the hostages. Mm. It was the seventeenth to twentieth of April, nineteen sixty-one. Just oh, sixty-one. Mm, okay. Okay. <laughs> um and during the negotiations, James Donovan met with Fidel Castro in person and discovered that they had a mutual love of diving. So Donovan said, oh, I'm going to get Fidel Castro a diving suit as a gift. And little did he know that everything he said and did with Fidel Castro was being noted and the CIA was watching every single move. And they thought, oh, he's going to give him a diving suit. How about we substitute our own diving suit for the diving suit that Donovan is going to give Fidel Castro. And what we'll do is we will lace the diving suit with bacteria, specifically tuberculosis. Oof. Yeah, nasty. Wow. Um, and Madura foot fungus. Sounds like, it sounds like a remedy for foot fungus. It does. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it does. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Presumably... that could be my foot fungus right <laughs> well, 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 T- TB is bad, but... TB is really bad. It's not I mean, a classic death sentence, is it? I assume the foot fungus is fatal, oh, because otherwise, like, we're going we're gonna to get rid of his foot. We're yeah. going to really do it. Yeah. <laughs> Won't be able to walk now. Yeah. <laughs> so the CIA had this plan. They had the diving suit. They laced it with the bacteria. And of course, what's apart from the whole assassination side of things, which is obviously highly immoral, what's complicated here is that James Donovan, the American citizen, would have been giving the diving suit to Fidel Castro and carrying it in his luggage and not realizing that it was laced with tuberculosis and foot fungus. So he himself might have affected by it just by handling the thing. Uh, Anyway, the didn't come to fruition, sadly, because uh, a lawyer for the CIA who was in contact with Donovan throughout these negotiations said, by the way, make sure you buy your own diving suit because I don't trust the CIA. <laughs> yeah. And then later He'd on... He'd heard about the clams. He'd heard about yeah, the, the exploding about clams. It. He knew what they were doing. And a few, uh, many years later, Richard Helms, who was uh, eventually the director of the CIA, um, he testified to Congress, I think, 
um, about these assassination methods. And he said, the diving suit never left the lab. Right. It was ready to go, but Donovan was too careful about the diving suit after being warned by this other lawyer at the CIA. What was the idea? I imagine the idea with, with these particular methods, TB and this fungus, is that they, they're things that can be, they do have another origin. Like they could have laced it with, I don't know, laced the, the, around the mouth with cyanide. But of course, then it could come back that he'd been mm. poisoned. And then who did it? Who or done ricin. it? Full break of Yeah. Yeah. That must be, it is an odd one, TB. I mean, it's a slow one. Maybe that's what they're thinking because mm. it's it's obviously very deadly, but also it, it's slow enough that maybe they were hoping it would take enough time, wouldn't suspect the, the CIA for doing it. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Perhaps. Um, or, yeah, but you think there are much more potent things they could do. Uh, some poison that would be soaked through the skin or, you know, the TB, I think, was put into the, the breathing uh, apparatus. Uh, I don't know if it was a scuba suit or a tank, you know, tank thing. Right. Um, but if the if whatever disease they put into his air supply would would get into his body, right? So, yeah, yeah, a number of things. But they Nasty. chose TB and foot fungus. So random. So I would so love random. to see. I know. I hope the papers are fully available. I haven't checked, but I would love to see if the explanation for the rationale behind that. Yeah, you know, like. We, we chose foot fungus because of all these reasons. We considered it better than all these other more deadly diseases like cholera and stuff like that. You know. <laughs> so yeah, Alex, what was your, uh, what was your favorite one? My favorite one was my favorite one because it's, it's the one that I could see being turned into a film if it wasn't already a film. Ooh, okay. um, it's, very, it's very James Bond, you've got to say. What was the, who's the director who said that all you need to make a successful film is a girl and a gun? Um, oh, I don't know. Anyway, so this story involves <laughs> it was it, me. A, girl and a, girl. Um, a woman named Marita Lorenz, who was Fidel Castro's scorned lover turned anti-communist militant. Um, yeah. Bit of background. Great. That sounds uh, complicated. It's a bit complicated this one, but so she's a German American woman born in 1939, and uh, following the war. Her mother worked at the OSS, the precursor to the CIA, um, mm -hmm. while her father operated a line of cruise ships. And Marita Lorenz worked on these ship, ships in her late teens, and it was there that she first met Fidel Castro. And according to her account of the events, she was 19 working on this cruise ship called the MS Berlin with her father, and they pulled into the Havana Harbor when Castro and his men pulled up, uh, wanting, to be let, uh, wanting to be let aboard. And uh, for Lorenz, it was love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> After giving him a tour of the boat, she apparently lost her virginity to him in one of the oh, boat's oh, private don't rooms. Get, don't get crude. Oh, man. Don't get crude. This is a, her oh, own account. This is a family show. Imagine kissing that beard. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> hey, some people <laughs> like beards. Right, Martin? Yeah, I love them. Because we both no, got beards. That beard. Your beards are lovely, fellas. Your beards oh. are trim and they're stylish. And they look like they tickle in just the right way when making love. But his beard, oh, it's like a bush. It and is, not that like kind of bush, bush yeah. uh, you know, like a hedge. <laughs> just stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Just, just stop. Just, just stop. stop. Just stop, please. So anyway, back to the story. <clears throat> yeah. They yeah. had this long uh, love affair. Castro flew her to Havana on his private jet. Um, eventually, however, Lorenz became pregnant and it's thought, it's, it's a bit unclear how many pregnancies she had, but, uh, and it's also not entirely clear whether Castro was the father of her son. There's no concrete evidence to suggest that a child was born over the course of their affair. Um, and apparently in 1959, when she was seven months pregnant, Castro st stated that he wanted no involvement in the pregnancy or with the baby. And she was apparently drugged by one of his aides and woke up in a hospital with an abortion having been oh, performed on her oh, while she no. was unconscious. Yeah. So That's following, horrible. So following this, she turned on him. She went back to Manhattan where her mother, uh, a CIA double agent called Frank Sturgis. Sorry, that sounded weird. Um, her mother and <laughs> a CIA double agent named Frank Sturgis. Um, <laughs> Recruited her to work with the CIA under various anti-Castro groups. 
and she was convinced to assassinate Castro here. After undergoing weeks of training and coaching, she boarded a plane back to Havana under the guise of handling personal matters uh, in the winter of 1960. And she had uh, armed with her poison pills and her mission was to meet with Castro long enough to drop the capsules into his drink. And if, if she succeeded, he would have been dead in under a minute. However, uh, according to her own account, uh, she, she says, I knew the minute I saw the outline of Havana, I couldn't do it. Um, and also, even if she'd wanted to kill him, she had apparently botched the job. She had stashed the pills in, in a cold cream jar that had made them gunky and unusable. So, uh, um, a cold cream jar? Yeah. Is yeah, it really weird. like moisturizer or something? I think so, something yeah. like that. I wonder, I wonder um, what, what, as soon as I saw Havana, I couldn't, I knew I couldn't do it. Mm. I wonder why. Well, anyway, I think she, she told, she confessed to Fidel Castro when she was, uh, you know, speaking with him in person mm. that she had been assigned to kill him. And apparently, according to her, he leaned over, pulled out his forty-five, and handed it to me. So he handed her a gun and said, and he said, uh, she said, sorry, he didn't even flinch. He said, you can't kill me. Nobody can kill me. And he smiled, chewed on his cigar, and she felt deflated. He was so sure of her. And then he grabbed her, and they made love, apparently. So oh, there that's you it. go. That's romantic, yeah, that does, really. That does sound quite bondy, doesn't it? Kind of the for, you know, forced romance. I mean, yeah, that sounds sounds tribe. like it. Yeah, I could see that being a yeah a, a great film, mm. a great espionage drama. Yeah, I mean, like, even yeah. even for Bond, the forced abortion element is a ooh, it's a little bit dicey, even for like that's some, that 60s seventies really, yeah. Bond. Yeah, yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> it kind of un, kind of undercuts the the romance of it a little bit. Yeah, I think. <laughs> um, I mean, there are some other. Attempts to to kill Castro. We've only scratched the surface here. Famously, and we kind of hinted at it, but we haven't actually mentioned it. It was the exploding cigar. Of course, yeah. Which literally sounds like that's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> I can't believe that is a bomb. they thought They're that would be a Q, <laughs> like, Q lab this, there. this cigar tastes surprisingly waxy and is twice the size of my normal ones. What, what, what is this? And the fuse. There's a there's a fuse. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how they thought they'd get away with that. What is that? Um, <laughs> What's it hissing sound? Uh, what is that mysterious ticking noise? And then they also apparently there was a poison pen, literally a poison pen. Again, sounds like fiction that they were going to hide a syringe inside a pen, which a bribed Cuban official was going to inject into Castro when he got close to him. But apparently that was abandoned <laughs> because they approached the Cuban official about it, and the Cuban official looked at the pen and said, "Well, that's that's a bit crap. That's not going to work." Don't you have anything more sophisticated <laughs> with his words? What? <laughs> what are you doing with the ballpoint? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, uh, oh, what other attempts? It's just a famous fire. examples. Do it all. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Oh, dear. Yeah, it's transparent. It's like, yeah, I can see the needle, mate. It's, like, it's quite obvious. It's hidden in here. Come on, guys. Come on with something else. Uh, yeah. That's a... Uh, Nice. Yeah, and, and then hundreds more. And hopefully someone's written a book which just lists and goes through them one by one. We'll have to look it up. And maybe we'll make another episode <laughs> about some other favorite methods. We should address, did any of these assassination attempts succeed? Because we still don't know, actually, what killed Fidel Castro. Mm. How did, what's the official story of how he died? Because I just assumed it was like old age or, or, or something well, related to Well, he that. did die at the age of 90. In 2016, wow. at half past 10 in the evening, according to the official statement from the government, which was taken over by his brother. However, no cause of death was given. I mean, um, even if it was the CIA, is that really a win for them? Like, can that, is that a win <laughs> They got <laughs> well 90 done. year old Castro after what, 50 years, 60 years of, I, of power? Yeah. I always said attempt number 387 would be the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, they had a, a massive parade. Apparently, it was like 900 kilometer long uh, march with his coffin before he was cremated. So, we'll never be able to exhume the body and uh, examine it. All we have, unless the Cubans have got some top secret files, which someday may be made public, we'll never know. No, no. Crazy. Crazy. 
that was actually the last assassination technique proposed by the CIA, number 931. Old age. <laughs> <laughs> How about we bide our time, guys? Just wait hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> Let's just wait him out. We'll still be here. He won't be. Uh, 